we are moving forward into statistical analysis and things are really, really, the rubber's really gonna hit the road. I'm very excited about this part of the course because it's so immensely useful and practical. Now, this idea of correlation is probably a word I hope you've heard before, like even in like the news or when there's, a, you know, an election happening and people are trying to convince you of something. Um, it's something you very briefly described in class before, which is why I'm going to jump straight in to the first question. Every statistical measure you know about answers a question. It tells you something. Let me give you an example. Mean, mode, median. They all roughly tell you, they all roughly answer the same question about a set of scores. What, what do they tell you? Mean, mode, or median? Yeah, where's the... Where's the middle of this data, roughly? Where's the center, right? They each answer it in a different way. Um, what about things like, say, uh, standard deviation, variance, um, range, interquartile? What do these tell you? How far each point is from the Yeah, how, how far are things spread out, right? So we call them measures of central tendency and then measures of spread, right? Now, correlation also answers a question, but it's quite a different one. It's a question that only is relevant in bivariate data. As the name suggests, bivariate means you've got two things, or perhaps more, but we're only going to particularly look at two things that you're interested in, two variables, bivariate. How much do you remember about the very brief conversation you had with Mrs. Lees earlier? What does correlation, or what could correlation tell you? What do you reckon, sorry? Well, she gave the example about Nicholas Cage movies. And... The example of Nicholas Cage movies. Now, it's almost like I planned this. Now. <clears throat> Uh, this is interesting because it's actually a counterexample. A counterexample is like this is an example of what it's not. So we'll come to this in a second. What's correlation supposed to tell you? Because this is what it doesn't tell you. We're actually going to the second question. Sophie. I think it's the relationships between two variables. Like the name suggests, it's about how are two things connected to each other? What does one variable, one score, like how does it show a connection to something else? How are these co-related? Okay, now this is a famous counterexample because we're sort of getting to the second question, right? What correlation tells you is when you've got two variables, how closely are they connected? But what it doesn't tell you, what correlation doesn't tell you is that one thing <laughs> causes another. Does that make sense? So that's why we say correlation, this is a very sort of famous and important phrase, that correlation does not equal causation, right? So hopefully this is something you can just say instinctively, but we want to sort of drill a bit further into, well, you know, okay, we get this is what it doesn't tell us, but what can it, right? Now, if you open up those little booklets that you've got there, go to exercise two, I think it is, which is pretty close to the front. The exercise headings are not that big, so you have to sort of hunt it down a little bit. Um, you will see Things like this, right? So we're looking at scatter graphs because scatter graphs are generally the tool of choice when you want to represent not one variable but two, right? So you have one axis to one variable, other axis for the other, and then we're comparing, right? So we've got two categories when you're looking at bivariate data, two categories of correlation. One is positive and one is negative. Let's just quickly describe each one. You have a look at the graph, right? Um, you can start with that very first one in the top left. When you have a positive correlation, what happens as one of the variables, let's just talk about the horizontal axis, as that one gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as you get larger and larger values, what happens to the other variable? It also gets bigger, right? If you think back a couple of years, we actually gave a name to this, we called it direct variation. So a positive correlation means you increase one, let's call it x. You take one variable, x, maybe it's height, temperature, money that, uh, that you earn, whatever. As you increase that one, <clears throat> the other one also increases. This is what we mean by a positive correlation. They go together. Does that make sense? Negative, you can see there, it starts over here and there's a couple down the bottom as well. When you increase one of the areas, like say the horizontal one, right, you don't get the same result for y. What happens to the other one? It decreases. You increase one you decrease the other. So an example that the um, book you're looking at gives is the longer people tend to wait, the longer customers tend to wait on like a, you know, a customer helpline, the more minutes you wait, what do you think the relationship is to how satisfied you are with the phone call? Yeah, less satisfied. More minutes waiting, 
less satisfied. So this is what we mean by a negative correlation. Okay? And then of course within those we can talk about, well, is it really, really closely related or it's just, just sort of vaguely related? Or is it kind of not related at all? Okay? So this is about questions one and two. These are the fundamentals of correlation. We're actually going to spend most of our time today thinking about how do we find it? And we're going to show you a couple of ways to do that. But before we get into those nuts and bolts, I want you to understand a little better well, what does it mean? So exercise two answers this question. Um, what can you get out of a data set if you know how it correlates? Now, really, really important thing just numerically is that positive and negative correlations the names refer to the values that you get. So you can get a correlation that ranges between negative one, which means it's a negative correlation, all the way to one. So you're always getting something in between those boundaries. Okay. Now, you might think that a natural letter to use for correlation would be something like C, except it turns out C's been taken. Like there's the speed of light and like y intercepts and all that kind of thing. So you don't use C at all. For the purposes of this lesson, we're going to use the letter R. We'll drill down into a little more later on about why we choose that letter. But for now, what I'd love you to indicate is correlation, which we're going to use the letter R to indicate, right? It's kind of like R for relation. Um, it's always going to be between negative 1 and 1. If it's negative, you've got a negative correlation. If it's positive, you've got a positive correlation. What kind of R value would you expect for something where there's no correlation? We said minus one is, is a negative correlation and one is a positive correlation. What do you reckon, Tal? Zero. Zero. If you had a correlation of zero, what does this mean? They're not correlated at all. Does that make sense? Okay. So the more you are down this end, the closer you are to something like this. Okay. And the further, the more negative you are, the closer you are to something like this. 